Welcome back to Motor Learning on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to be differentiating between a blocked practice schedule and a random practice schedule. Okay. So let's suppose we're in Mighty Mix Boxing Gym. Anyone comment if you get the reference on that? And uh, let's say we got several things to choose from in here to train. We've got a heavy bag over here. We've got the speed bag, we've got the uppercut bag, and then we've got a ring for just general sparring. So let's say somebody comes into the gym and asks you to make them a blocked practice schedule. What would you do? You need to know what a blocked practice schedule is. Well, in blocked practice, basically there's no randomization or there's no variation in what you're doing that training session. Okay. So let's suppose one day is a training session. Well, there's no variation in that training session. You're doing the same thing for that entire training session. And oftentimes in block practice schedules, even the next training session will still be that same motor skill. Okay, so we've got four things to choose from here. But if I had a block practice schedule, let's say days one and two, I would only be doing the heavy bag. That's it. Okay, nothing else from these three, just heavy bag. And then maybe on day three it'll change, and I'll be doing all speed bag, day four, all speed bag. But the point is, each training day, there's no variation, okay? Everything's the same. Okay, then maybe day five we switch to uppercut bags. Day six would also be all uppercut bags. But the point is, in a blocked practice schedule, you do the same motor skill, the same motor task, that entire training session, and there's no change. Okay. The difference with a random practice schedule is that not only is every day randomized, but you do multiple things in that training day and the order changes. It's variable. It's random. I think you can kind of get the idea here by looking at this training schedule. So if this were a random practice schedule, let's look at day one. We might start with the heavy bag and then move to the speed bag and then go to the uppercuts uppercut bag over here and that's day one so notice one big difference already okay in blocked practice I only did one thing that day but in random practice I do three different things okay and there's not necessarily a set order they're random so on day two I'm not even repeating this sequence I'm still gonna do three things maybe but I'm gonna change the order so on day two I start with speed bag I then go to sparring, that wasn't even done the first day, and then I go to uppercuts. And then day three, you know, start with speed bag again, that's possible, but then I go to heavy bag, and then sparring. So two things about random practice. One, not only are you doing different activities in one training session, but also when you compare between different training sessions, um, you're also doing a different order of things, okay? And so when you look at this uh, schedule right here, it does look completely randomized. It looks like I could have just drawn these out of a hat, and this is what I got for that particular day or for that whole week, okay? So hopefully that makes sense to you. Uh, let's actually look at this other um, uh, series of schedules right here. we got a six-day schedule. Here's another thing to il illustrate block practice. So apparently in this, we're doing three sets of something. Each set is 10 minutes. But in blocked practice on day one, let's say, all three sets are whatever overhand is. Maybe this is throws or something like that. All three sets are overhand. Day two, they're also all overhand. Day three and four, all underhand. Day five and six, all sidearm. So in blocked practice, one, each training session is pretty much all the same. There's no randomization to it. And then also over the course of the week, let's say, um, it's very predictable what you're doing. There's nothing random about this. Okay. In fact, we could even say that these training sessions, one and two, are blocked with each other. Three and four are blocked with each other, and so on and so forth. That's actually where block practice gets its name. Now, in random practice, we're still doing six class days, three 10-minute uh, sets. But notice that for the most part, it looks like these are, are really just randomized. I mean, they probably did just draw these out of a hat, so to speak. So on day one, the first set's underhand, second's overhand, three is underhand. Technically, it probably should be different here. You shouldn't have two underhands. Over here on the day three, you have two sidearms. But the point is, is if we compare between different days, 
each day is sufficiently different from the others. Okay, um, so that's a very important key with random practice. Okay, you can sometimes have uh, some of the same tasks within a given training day, but in a random practice, each day really ought to be completely different and unique from the others. So everything is randomized. Now, one other thing when we're comparing random and blocked practice has to do with the number of errors in the movement during the acquisition phase. So we're first learning this motor task. Okay? If we look at blocked practice here in this light blue, we can tell it's blocked because it's A, 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 B, 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 C, 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 right? And in this blocked practice, what do you notice about the number of errors? Well, it's lower. There's lower errors in blocked practice when we're first learning a motor skill. Okay, that makes sense that there's lower errors. Why? Because you're doing the same task over and over again, right? You're doing whatever task A is over and over again. You ought to be getting pretty good at it if you're doing it over and over again. And so you're going to expect to see less errors. And when we look at random practice, A, B, C, B, A, C, I mean, it's clearly randomized. We see that overall during the initial acquisition phase where we're learning the motor skill, there's more errors when we compare to block practice. So why on earth would we want to do random practice? There has to be some kind of advantage to it, right? It turns out when you're looking at long-term retention of the motor skill, random practice leads to better retention. Okay. Blocked practice leads to better performance, particularly in the short term, but blocked practice is not associated with as good long-term retention. So there might be some motor skill that you need somebody to learn just for a short period of time. In that case, blocked practice would be better because in blocked practice, you do have less errors. But if you were teaching someone a motor skill where you want them to be able to retain that long term, random practice is definitely better. And even though there's initially more errors in the short term, in the long term, retention of the motor skill and learning is superior with random practice. Okay, so hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of, of blocked versus random practice. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.